I'm going to kind of like guide you through the challenges and steps we have so far done in catching the urban chameleon, uh, which is um, the online platform for Project Indigo um, and uh, also the challenges and uh, next ideas that we are facing. So as you already know, Indigo aims to um, inventory, disseminate, and analyze the graffiti that um, are created along the Donau Canal. And um, to like one uh, milestone that combines all of these aspects is uh, the Urban Chameleon, the online platform um, that uh, I will present you now here. Um, the um, platform incorporates the data that uh, the, graffitis, the graffiti that have been documented at the donor canal then are processed, are archived, and uh, the platform aims to disseminate and also enable users with any backgrounds, either researchers or just graffiti enthusiasts, to analyze this specific landscape. To um, achieve this online platform, we are kind of uh, doing a circular approach. That's what I'm calling it. So um, first, we uh, are started to analyze the graffiti field and the research disciplines that are focusing um, on graffiti. Then the next step is to plan what, uh, what do we have? What uh, do we want to do? Then the next step is to design the actual uh, website uh, with a nice user uh, interface. Um, and uh, then uh, the testing phase and the deployment phase of uh, the online platform, um, which will then um, uh, lead to getting feedback from colleagues and uh, people who are using the website, which will then lead again into analyzing the website and making it better. So um, I will now first start uh, with um, yeah, telling you all what we are actually analyzing here. Um, if you have been a part of the conference last year, I uh, presented the approach that we did in generating uh, graffiti scissors. Um, therefore, we did a literature review, collected many uh, books and papers, um, which le led to a massive amount of like um, 700 different terms uh, in the contemporary graffiti um, culture that uh, are being used. And uh, to give our Cesar, so our controlled vocabulary uh, structure, we um, decided to use the hierarchical structure of the Getty uh, art and architecture Cesars. This is a widely used Cesars. And um, yeah, we wanted to use it uh, to make uh, Indigo um, yeah, long living here in a way. So. Um, to, to have something that people are using uh, and incorporating in their work um, and that we can just easily connect our research to. Uh, the whole uh, Cesaris then, as my colleagues uh, this morning already um, told you, will be published to vocabs. Um, and uh, is then also online and ready to use by everyone else. Um, what came to our also awareness uh, when doing the literature review was how many disciplines are actually interested in researching on graffiti. And all these disciplines have different uh, questions uh, that they're um, studying and wanting to know more in, in terms uh, in regards to graffiti. So, to um, form, uh, to, to make our website usable for all these different disciplines, we have to understand what kind of research question these people are interested in. 
So um, I put two examples here, uh, like uh, how does the distribution of different graffiti sites vary across the right bank of the Donau Canal in Vienna today? To answer this question, we uh, need information about the location and also the styles, um, and maybe even the daytime, like today. Um, then for the research question, are there different trends uh, in the use of graffiti styles compared to summer and winter? We need uh, um, more information on like materials and techniques that are used that are kind of also influencing the styles. So um, these things we have to uh, keep in the back of our mind when developing uh, an online platform that is used uh, for analyzing data. So therefore, uh, we set out and uh, started to structure uh, the metadata that we want to collect in the scope of Indigo. And to not start from nothing, we looked uh, into all the other graffiti uh, projects and uh, online databases that are available and what kind of information they're actually collecting. And with, um, with also uh, uh, determining the needs that um, Indigo, um, like uh, I myself, am doing a PhD on uh, temporal changes. So for me, the temporal events are uh, a crucial part. So for me, it would be good to also collect them uh, in our metadata. Um, and uh, we. Um, based on that, we created a huge Excel, Excel sheet um, where all the different uh, categories um, of metadata are listed. And because we are using, as already uh, this morning um, uh, revealed, we are using the online platform Open Atlas. So we are actually mapping our metadata in the last step to uh, the online database Open Atlas. Um, and yeah, this this is the whole analysis part. And now we are going uh, on to the planning. Like um, um, we know that uh, everything um, feeds into Open Atlas. So our vocabulary, like the uh, controlled uh, terminology, um, the data comes. Uh, from Open Atlas via an API, an ap application um, programming interface, which uh, it helps um, to fetch data from an online database. Um, so um, this is where most of our data comes from, and this is a crucial part uh, in, in the planning step. Furthermore, we created a wireframe um, to map out what kind of pages and um, interfaces the user can see and uh, connect with and um, also determine where the data actually comes from like what kind of um, queries do we have to push to open atlas to get uh, the data information that we need uh, in the different places that we want something to happen so with, with all that set in our mind, we are now at the stage of designing. And um, to, to go into the um, design element, the, the web development part uh, on the Urban Chameleon website, we are using uh, mainly the uh, languages TypeScript, uh, CSS and SAS, and uh, the dependencies uh, Leaflet, Cesium, Tel Tailwind CSS and deploy it all on GitHub, which at the end of the project will also be open access to available. Um, so uh, I will now go into the importance of uh, the dependencies a little bit. Um, we have uh, Tailwind for most part of uh, the design elements like uh, the table view that we have here, but we also see that um, the uh, vocabulary uh, comes in really important as the types are well defined and um, um, we can we can search through them uh, 
to uh, create uh, an analysis of the data. Um, then for the map, we are using Leaflet, which is a, a widely used uh, JavaScript library for um, online web, so, uh, web maps. It's really commonly used. And as you can see, we are uh, already able to display some um, graffiti information that we put onto Open Atlas, and we can fetch the data. We can hover over the different images and even um, display more information about each graffiti. So these are the design uh, stage that we are currently in. Now comes the outlook of what is still uh, in the Fugas to do. And um, that will uh, be the last um, two uh, steps of the circle also. Like we, will, we want to be able to query all the data. So we have to make sure that if we have such a research question, um, like I showed you at the beginning, um, we get information, uh, we can actually click the information that we want today, uh, the right uh, bank of the donor canal, and select all styles. And then we should be able to get a result and download that. The same for the other question, where we uh, can actually determine different time spans. And even it would be um, amazing to have different uh, queries uh, comparable to each other. Um, then the um, big thing that we are still uh, are focusing on is the foreign viewer. So therefore, we are using Cesium.js, um, which is uh, also a, a JavaScript library and um, allows the uh, online um, 3D map interactions, like uh, the one you can see here, actually. Um, so we want to be able to walk uh, along the donor canal in our web browser and ask uh, the graffiti um, landscape specific questions. But also uh, we want to be able with this um, for the web viewer to display uh, the overlaying of the graffiti over, uh, over one another. Um, so yeah. Uh, the next uh, phases are um, the testing, deployment, and feedback. Um, you can already visit the website now, um, um, and, but it's still under construction. So uh, the feedback round for the uh, public uh, people uh, will be not, is not yet there um, as we are still in the testing and deployment phase. So yeah, thank you for the opportunity to presenting that. And um... perfect, Leon. Actually, we're even early, so we have plenty of time for questions. Uh, any question? Uh, I would be interested in. in uh difference between using Leaflet or Google Maps is some project I uh, follow Google or project I want is a priority and I've never heard about them before. So yeah, any on that like so um Leaflet is open source so you can um see the code you can you know tangle with it you can create your own maps basically yeah, uh, implement your own design choices, whereas Google is more static mm. in that uh, kind of sense. So just um, Google wants to appear a certain way. So okay. yeah, just to follow up on that, I was, I was trying to mention this on Friday, but so I work for the ancient graffiti project and we use leaflet and LSM because especially when you're working with an ancient site, you have different property lines than you do for a contemporary mm -hmm. site. So I, I don't know anything about the back end of it. I'm on the I'm on the front end of this, but um you you can draw your own lines and make your own property designations and add things to the uh, OSM to equal thing. Okay. So, 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 so.
I have a very stupid question. <laughs> but uh, the, the positioning uh, in the coordinates uh, that is the longitude the of the, each uh, uh, painting uh, is referred to the back center of the image. We, because I think that you position the ele every element respect to one point, but uh, talking about an image, so the point is in the yeah. right center of the image. No? Every pixel of every image has every these coordinates. Okay. Oh, wow. That's on the left. Isn't that every pixel? But there are a lot of everything is Everything is due reference in the general uh, coordinate reference yes. system of, of the east part of Austria. In season, they use an older coordinate reference system. So we have to see how and if you're going to do some transformations there. Um, and many of the coordinate problems, or it's not really problems, but things that we are looking into is also how do we have to simplify certain 3D stuff into 2D stuff, uh, right? Because some of our processing steps are 2D and not 3D. But in general, I can say that the order photographs we create, so the co co completely corrected photographs, yeah. Every single pixel you can also the correct coordinate. And so if you have another layer of different paintings, you the have the same coordinates so that uh, yeah, they are they are not millimeters, <laughs> but they are centimeter actually <laughs> Thanks. So I had the question about the terminology. Yes, I remember we were discussing a lot about that last year, and uh, I, I think she probably did one of the greatest jobs ever because it's so complex. But I didn't really get how it's connected with getting AAT. And like, for example, if I want to recommend some of my students to come and uh, look for that terminology for everything figured out with all the references and stuff, like where would they go? Uh, and how would they you know, find what they need. And do they need to go to Getty or to Indigo or like, I just didn't, didn't get that part, sorry. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> our version of the Gaffetti Cesars is, um, or will be published on vocabs. And we use basically the main hi hierarchy parts from the Getty to structure our Cesars. So like, um, the Getty AT is a facet uh, Cesaurus. So you have um, the main categories uh, like um, associated concepts. Right, right. And then you have like, I don't know, urban uh, visual works under that. I, I cannot, I, I don't know what for yeah, sure, but yeah. it's like um, we, we are following the structure of the Getty AT. Okay, but everything is in vocab. Yes. It's yeah, uh, it's, 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 staging instance. It will be made public then, no, uh, yeah, no, and no. will be available, freely available to everyone. And yeah, so basically, but still like every concept for the part we needed, it's modeled uh, like the whole hierarchy until that concept is modeled uh, according to the AT structure. So you can really place them face to face and see where every single concept fits into the hierarchy of Getty IT. Okay, good. But then like you just go to walk up and, and find it. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. okay. But like okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if I just add maybe one one thing that we did not do so far. So what Turner said is we check maybe see like millions of pieces of literature, right? To see what terms are used and how does author A use the term and how does author B use the term and how can we at Indigo compute kind of feeling some way of dealing with this? And then you have things like, okay, what is the upper term, what is the lower term? And to get structure in this, we use the get the AP up to trying a lot of things ourselves. The thing that you give our so far is define the term itself. So we really have to still find for most of the terms definitions, we really have to define, define those as well. 
and then add those references. Because what you're doing now with all the metadata schemas that you're working on, you're still seeing, okay, maybe we have to add them, so maybe the higher concern terms has to change. Mm -hmm. And since since I would like to the description of the term to reflect also the hierarchy it is in, so that even if you have a term, you know, more or less, okay, this term means that it is a symbol that is used in graffiti, maybe, and political graffiti or whatever, so that um, we can only make these descriptions once you more or less cement this whole, um, yeah, this whole uh, hierarchy, which is more or less cemented at this stage. But like I said, since you're making also now at the very end, the whole make of the schema, the like certain future. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that after Indigo, even if you don't manage to, to have all the definitions, that you go to vocabs where they host all the vocabularies and that you just go there and that's everything. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's cool. And then everything will be like in legal part, like in legal marks. What you did, yeah. Like I think in the URI, actually, yeah, the yeah, uh, URI, it's we have a standard part which is like vocabs, ACDH, or then slash indigo in slash, and then right. uh, okay. concept. Yeah, I'll keep my friend, my fingers crossed because I think it's going to be very useful for the future. Job. Right. So they would have to do everything you did. I mean, one, one important aspect that we try to do also, not only what you want to present it here and why we use Leaflet, and with everything that you produce, whether the software or everything should be open source, right? So everything is not only free, it's open source. So everybody can exactly see what we did. They can expand upon this. So there's nothing closed source that we, that we try to, to develop. So that's also why we use certain technologies like Caesar and Leaflet and Dirt Yeah. I would have a question. I'm just interested. Uh, what is the goal? How up to date should the data be uh, that we can find that we can find online? In the end, like have you decided that if I look at it now, can I see what graffiti is there one week ago or one month ago, or uh, is the goal to make it automatic to make that on it? <laughs> way to complicate it to us <laughs> anyway, like at, at the end of indigo all the data should be in there that's the goal basically but when i wrote project indigo my goal was to find let's say only to find to to establish the logistical framework the hardware the software to turn this into a let's say a decade monitoring project so it would mean that you would need funding for the next eight years to do, because I think if we pull this up, the, the big problem is simply finding the money to do this. But at this moment, almost all the, sim the individual parts are getting there. And uh, it might be that at just at the end of the project, you don't have enough time to really process and upload all the data, but it was very essential for uh, me. And it's also my responsibility that I did not want to just Take of a mark like we made a we made a platform. The reviewers are happy and the funding body is happy because this would be a platform that I would not be happy with and maybe could not be useful in the future. A lot of people would would check right. So what we want to do is, as you now clearly said, we want to make sure that it can be used by whoever wants to research the feature or just enjoy it and walk virtually along it. So the whole backend must must support this. And this can come at the cost of, at the end, that we cannot process all the data and it's just a very small data set. <laughs> but at least if you have something, I could hopefully, um, let's say, raise more funding to, to do this because uh, we work together with Stefan from Spray City. He is going along the Dora Canal every four or five days. And all our, the way that we uh, photograph, or the way that Stefan photograph, and the way that we make metadata, the way that we structure our software is all with one goal automation in mind, as much as possible. So ideally, but this is ideally because there's still some manual work, of course, you, if we can continue with this project, yeah, then we would have everything from the start of Indigo 2010-21 until the one we run out. This is the idea. But you are now already talking on, I don't know how many, but we have walked far above 100,000 photographs in a year and a half. So you can imagine the amount of work that goes into it. Because one of the very big thing, things that you try to pull off, which is the hardest thing, is the whole temporal aspect. So we want to know at which specific time, which graffiti are visible, which graffiti came behind it, which was before it, how long they were visible, with uncertainty and how, because we cannot photograph every day. 
And this is good for every single graffiti that you photograph is almost mental suicide. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we aim for. <laughs> but that's where we are. <laughs> so yes, the, the, the goal is rather big. And um, I mean, I also told them and we are behind on scheduling it because this was supposed to be launched now, right? But there are so many additional questions that came along and so many things you have to think about and reinvent. And uh, as Jonas said, even if you take take 100 books of graffiti, the terminology they use is not identical, right? But if you want people to come to our platform, at least we have to give them a source when they look for political graffiti or even if they look for graffiti that we explain them in our database, this is either different from street art or street art is a sub part or graffiti is a sub part of the, so that all this is defined because if this is not defined and people simply look for some terms, they don't really know what they are looking for because we did not define this properly. So yes, a lot of, a lot of stuff search we went into this and then as they described this morning, because our goals are rather high, a lot of new pipelines have to be developed where data goes in first and then it comes out then. Um, so a very long answer to your question to say, hopefully a few weeks after we sort of drop this. Once everything runs. Okay, if there are no more questions, I would like to thank again Jonas Schlegel.